Hello, we're here at the Academy. <laughs> Hello, we're here at the American Academy of Forensic Sciences meeting, and this is Dave, who cracked the Zodiac Killer code. Watch his YouTube videos. Um, you said you, you are doing more uh, encryptions. Wh which ones are these going to be in the next years? Probably oh. because you know you were not really saying what you were doing. <laughs> well, some of it has to do with them. I've got some stuff for them that I'm looking at. So, so, so crime-related stuff. Crime-related, yeah, some crime-related ones, and you know the the remaining two. There's still some interesting ideas that uh, that we could try out on those, but I'm not too hopeful about those. But I like to keep up with um, progress and other unsolved mysteries like the Voynich manuscript and things like that. What, what, what's your guess on the Voynich manuscript? Because most Germans think it's it's just random stuff, but I, I don't know. What do you think? Right? I think there's evidence of some kind of at least some kind of systematic process which, in which, creating it. Which type of patterns did you see until now? Or won't you, don't oh, you I don't know. I, I, I haven't studied it that much. I'm kind of ah, like okay. watching from a distance okay. and seeing like <laughs> what people are saying about it. Like there's some linguistic things in it, but it's, it's unusual because of the way like it, it doesn't quite line up with certain languages, but other languages it lines up better like in Arabic and things like that. So that, that, that kind of stuff is pretty interesting. What would you say to younger people who are starting like you, you know, just getting involved into an old criminal case, true crime and stuff, and then spending 15 years to, to crack it? Would you recommend it to your kids? Or uh, would, <laughs> maybe I would say very, be very, very careful because it, we got very lucky. And in a lot of these kind of cases, they just go on forever without any you know, satisfying end. Um, so you have to be mindful of that. You have to also be careful which paths you go down because you might end up wasting a bunch of time. And a lot of people did waste time in this case. Like the meme guy that you mentioned. Yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, it's, you said you, you used a lot of computer programming, talking to other people. You used Java. Another mm -hmm. person used basic or quick basic. What is it? What's it called? Uh, free basic, maybe power basic, something like that. Do you think that this is going to be the way, the direction in the future to use a lot of computer power and throw that on those cases? Because I, I realized you used a lot of intuition, even mm -hmm. though even though you don't like say it, but you did. For example, you saw some parts standing out, and you know. So how much intuition is still necessary in the future? I think it, it really depends on the problem. This was a very unique problem. There aren't many problems like the Zodiac 340 cipher. There are some that are kind of in the same category, transposition ciphers where they can't figure out what the transposition is. And so one of the things you can do is build tools that can put unknown ciphers into different categories. And I think that's important because most of the work in solving the cipher is identifying what kind it is. So if you have something you're looking at, an experienced crypt analyst can go, oh, that's probably substitution. That's probably transposition. She's from the FBI sitting behind us. Yeah. <laughs> from, yeah. Yeah. But did I understand correctly, you got 650,000 blocks of solutions that were sent to you by a colleague. How did you, how did, which type of <laughs> program did you use for that? So you, that you said you used, you, you, uh, used uh, batches to feed mm -hmm. this into your program. How on earth is that? Working. Well, that's a, one of the nice features of Jarl's program. Like he built that because he was doing the same thing. He was creating a bunch of different tests, and each test is a rearrangement of the 340. So it's just the symbols rearranged in a different way. Then feeding that into the software, and the software would try to treat it as a regular old substitution cipher and come up with the key. But how do you just feed it in? I mean, we, how, how do you do that? Oh, it's just you just throw them all in one directory, and you tell it <laughs> they're in that directory, and. You make a little file, like a configuration file that says what they are, and then you click the button and you just wait. And it'll spit out the results in a different directory. And it has a score on each one. So you look at the ones that are high score. The score is how much does it resemble actual language, right? Yes, it's like a, a, a fast estimate of the quality of the you know, readability of the message. Okay, last two questions. How much of a ner nerd do you have to be to, to do that work? Do you think it's very nerdy or do you? Yeah, it's very nerdy. It's very nerdy. He's a software programmer, right? That's your job. <laughs> you don't, yeah, there's, there's a lot of nerds doing uh, quick breaking. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and final question, you, you mentioned your family. Are they super proud of their, you know, of you? <laughs> yeah, they, I think so. They also, you know, if it hadn't turned out this way, they probably would be really tired of it. And they, you know, they're occasionally still... But do they ask you? Did, did they ask you in between, like after five years, after ten years, like how's it going? Explain us something. Or are they like, oh god? Well, luckily for me, I was starting to get invited to different conferences. Even though we didn't have a solution yet, I was still able to go out and talk about it in a you know 
it gave some validation that what I was doing was actually mattering. Did you mean to your family also? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, uh, oh, it's, you know, it's good for my career. It's good for, you know, professional life and things. But so, was it good for your career? Because you, you have your own business probably, or you're working as a software programmer yeah. and are employed. Yeah, did it, it helps. Help you in, yeah, it I did. think it helps. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's like attacking any other problem. If you approach it the right way, it's, um, you're more likely to succeed. If you, uh, like in software development, you have a problem and you're trying to come up with the best path to the solution to the problem. And so working on 340 kind of sharpened my skills in the other areas too. So, and on the, on the very day you realized that you, that you got it, what, what, did, what did you do in that moment? Like become super quiet, super focused and concentrated or just bursting out and throwing the I, coffee mug <laughs> through, the, through the office? So I, I jumped out of my chair, I yelled, holy shit. And startled my dog because I'm in my office with my dog all the time. And the dog was like, what's going on? <laughs> and then I started pacing around and filled the heart. In the office? In the office, yeah. And so for so many years, I had, I've had close to that feeling before thinking that I was on the right track. But I shut all that down like years ago because most of the time you hit a brick wall. Oh, that didn't work. And that didn't work. That didn't work. So I was like skeptical about everything until I saw that phrase. That was a me on the TV show, and that's when I knew. And so I couldn't be skeptical anymore. It was impossible to be skeptical. And then you just type, wrote an email to the FBI, or you, you, you ran after to your family? Up, after we, yeah, after we cleaned up, it took a few days. We had that first part of the cipher solved, but we were running into those problems with the rest of it. And we're like, oh, we're so close, but I think we'll get some sleep now. <laughs> you know, we'll have to deal with work and, and uh, regular responsibilities while sitting on a potential big soul. And then eventually we were able to clean it up. Yarl helped us a lot with that second section. You know, we were all kind of working on it together. The FBI did help you? Oh, no, Yarl. Oh, oh the, the software, other guy. The Belgian. The Belgian guy. Yeah. Watch, watch his video. You will learn more yeah. about the other guys. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's crack Zodiac. Go check it out. Um, yeah, he, um, he looked at it and he had encountered that kind of problem before in his test when he was... His idea was maybe there was some mistake in the transposition process. So he was crafting his experiments kind of around that idea. So he recognized what was going on. Because of that. And so it was like, oh, just ship this line. That fixes everything. Perfect. And, uh, and skipping the life is. That, that, that's very interesting. I, to, 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 yeah. I, you, you will see it in this video. To, to move a complete line a little bit to the side and then switch the age. What's with the age? Do, do you have any idea? Do you think that happened that, while he was rearranging everything? It or? might be, yeah. He had a misalignment when he had, if he had cut it out in shapes or something and then he was writing the message and he had a misalignment, it could be. Or he had another copy of it written and he was just transcribing it and he was off by one and he didn't want to rewrite it. So and he just stuck the age at the end. It could see. be something like that. Have you been no. a true crime buff all your life when you were a kid or something? Not really, no. A it, little bit? Kind of a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. But it was really the cipher that drew me in. Join the forensic community, watch his videos. <laughs> Thank you very, very, very much for your work and your talk. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs>